الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and all within and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time and we pray that Allah the exalted will cause us to be among them dear brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh the Prophet والسلام, has highlighted for us that Islam is not only about the ibadat it is not only about the worship the prayers and the fasting and the zakat and so on these things are certainly important so don't get me wrong but what the Prophet السلام, has taught us is that the ibadat alone do not make up Islam there are other important aspects that the Muslim needs to also perform in order to maintain that balance that Islam seeks for every individual. So in this authentic hadith, he highlights the importance of the aspect of manners and behaviors and etiquettes and how important that is also in addition to the worship, the acts of worship. See, often we run into people these days who are very focused on their ibadah, their worship. But when it comes to their etiquettes and their manners and their behavior, they don't seem to realize that this is also important. That is also an integral part of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ You know, when he summed up his mission, he said, I was sent, surely I was sent in order to perfect good manners. So, you notice he didn't define his mission by the ibadah, by the worship, but he defined it by the akhlaq, the etiquettes and behavior of the individual. And there are many ahadith, of course, authentic ones in the sunnah that highlight the erroneous belief, erroneous belief that some people have that once the ibadat are okay, you know, everything else is fine, not necessarily. But today I want to share with you a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ, again, you know, it's an aspect of perfecting good behavior. As he says, this is my mission. I was sent in order to perfect good behavior. Not just to teach good behavior, but to perfect it, which means to take it to another level. So in this hadith, you know, we all know that, uh, especially in this society, that we, we recognize that kindness, and common courtesy are good qualities. So if someone opens the door for you, for example, you say thank you. You just don't walk through uh, as if you know you are entitled to them opening the door for you. If someone uh, does something for you, even if it's something small, you thank them, you say thank you. The Prophet السلام, in this hadith, which Shaykh Al-Bani graded as Sahih, he talks about this. He says, وَمَنْ صَنَعَ إِلَيْكُمْ مَعْرُوفَ فَكَافِئُوهُ Whoever does something good for you, reward them. Reward them. Now that reward may take many different forms. It could be something as simple as saying thank you to the person. And it can get larger from that. Alright, maybe a gift, let's say. Alright, it could even be paying the person, right? Monetarily compensating them for whatever they have done for you. But most people, mashallah, when they do something as an act of kindness for someone else, they're not looking for payment. So, you know, they may not take the cash, you know, the money, but if you buy them a coffee and a donut, a croissant, you know, something like that, they will, they will accept that. 
So the Prophet ﷺ, though he said that whoever does something good for you, man sana'a ilaykum ma'roofan fakafi'u. Give them some kind of reward or compensation. Don't just assume that you know, uh, I deserve this and it was the person's duty, no. Reward them with something. At the very least, make the offer. But like I said, often, subhanAllah, most people, even, you know, non-Muslims, not just Muslims, but even non-Muslims, when you offer them a reward, they will refuse it. This is the basic human decency and common courtesy that, alhamdulillah, is, is prevalent in the behavior of most people. And alhamdulillah for that. The Prophet ﷺ said though, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدُوا مَا تُكَافِئُونَهُ if you do not find what you can uh, repay that person with, you don't find anything, what do you do? He says, فَدْعُوا لَهُ حَتَّى تَرَوْا أَنَّكُمْ كَافَأْتُمُ He said, make dua for that person until you believe you have repaid them. Subhanallah. Dua. Make dua for the person. And uh, me, you know, we may not uh, really realize this, but this is also a form of repaying them, as opposed to offering them something material, whether it's a gift or um, you know money or or uh, some gift in kind, something of value. You know, sometimes, Subhanallah, I, I do things for people. They give me these gift cards, right? <coughs> and Alhamdulillah, I mean, we're not expecting or looking forward for any. Uh, reward per se, but this is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. We should give a reward as a demonstration of our appreciation and recognition of their act of kindness. And if we cannot find, and if the person refuses everything, because there are people like that, mashallah, they won't take it, then the least we can do, make dua for them. And he says, alayhi salam, make dua. فَدْعُوا لَهُ حَتَّى تَرَوْا Until you believe or until you see that you have compensated them. So this is the power of dua. It is a form of compensation. So this is the level of, of good manners and good behavior that the Prophet ﷺ has taught us that form uh, an integral and important part of being Muslim uh, of the Islamic way of life, not just the ibadat, it's also about akhlaq. So let us try, brothers and sisters, and I know every day, uh, perhaps many times a day, there are people who do even small acts of kindness for us. Let us try to practice this hadith and try to reward them in some way, even if it is to, to make dua for them. In fact, in another hadith, but it's related to our topic, the Prophet salam, he said, when someone does something good for you, if you say, Jazakallahu khayran, when someone has done some kind of good for you, then you have most eloquently thanked the person. Faqad ablaqta fi shukr, he said, alayhi salam. فَقَدْ أَبْلَغْتَ فِي شُكْرُ You have thanked them in the most eloquent manner. There's nothing more eloquent than this to say, O oh Allah, reward them with good. Jazakallahu khayra. Thank you is good, is, is okay. Right? But to go beyond that and ask Allah to reward them with something that's good for them, that's even better. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open our hearts and minds so that not only can we understand this wonderful message he has revealed for the upliftment of people in this world and, and as well as in the hereafter, but that we would be motivated and also inspired to live by the message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be kind and generous to our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in faith as well as in humanity. And may Allah cause us to have good manners and to constantly uh, recompense those who show us acts of kindness even if it is making dua for them or for each other.
Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.